Okay, so we're going to talk about in this video HMBC, heteronuclear multiple bond correlations. And this is a follow up because we last video we looked at HMQC, which is the one bond coupling. So in shorthand, that's H and C correlations, heteronuclear. It can be other at material. Uh, nuclei, but for this video, we're looking at proton carbon. So HMQC is one bond, the proton that's bonded to that carbon. HMBC is HC, and it's usually two or three bond coupling. The old version of this experiment was called the co-lock. It, it was gathered in a different way, but the spectra are look the same. Um, so you you can see the um, and interpret them in the same way if you see a coloc. So two to three bonds. Um, this is particularly frequently used to put together spin systems that you can't. So when we're looking at cozy or we're looking at proton proton correlations, we can see all of the atoms that are connected through a spin system that have coupling to each other, but we don't see how spin systems are connected. So this will allow us to do that. So this is the HMQC experiment that we did last week, uh, last video. So we're going to go ahead and put these in. This is 1.2 is connected to 14. Uh, 1.8 or 9 is connected to 18. 4 is connected to 60. So this is 3.9, I think. 143 is connected to 5.8. And this one here at 6.9 is bonded to 144, 145. And this is our carbonyl. So we just put a line through there. There are no hydrogens on that. Usually you do the HMQC first so that you can keep track of what's going on in the HMBC because you need to know who they are. So if we look, I'm going to go through and take that data that we had and we're going to call that F. And then this is A. Um, you can give them anything you want, but it makes things a lot easier if you've got them labeled out. And then this is E. This is E. And this was, let's see. Um, 5.9 uh, 5 is C, and this is B, and so this is C, and this is B, I believe that, yep. And um, then this is D, the carbonyl. So then we'll go ahead and do our correlations. Just fill in the table, F, C's, proton E, and that's the only thing we see as we go down this line. You can go down this line, and A, C, C, and B. Just be methodical. E, C, F, and D. And there is an outcome associated in the grading system with just correlating and filling out your table, making sure you're doing it methodically. C, C, B, B, C, C, and D. Okay. So then you'd go through and see how they match up. And this is E sees F and F sees E. So we draw a double headed arrow. So we can double check this, make sure this is a proton here. And that's one, two bonds from proton E to carbon F and same for proton F to carbon E. So that's a two bond correlation and it works. So you just always wanna make sure if you're getting four bond or five bond, it has to either be through an extended conjugated system or more likely you might have your structure wrong. So A, C, B, and C, that makes sense. Um, e, C, F, and D, okay, double check. One, two, three bonds, that works. And now all of a sudden you can see in our proton NMR, we could see this apple was co connected to an oxygen because of the shift. But in a more complicated structure, I wouldn't know where that necessarily was connected. But now I have confirmation that this ethoxy is bonded to this particular carbonyl. 
uh, C sees B, okay, uh, big surprise there, they're coupled to each other, they're bonded, and then to confirm B sees C and B sees D. So again, coupling to that carbonyl, confirming that the allyl system is also bonded to that carbonyl. So that's a really nice way to be able to put part structures together. Um, before we were just doing them by process of elimination. So just a couple of caveats about an HMBC. It's optimized for two to three bond correlations. Sometimes you see the one bond correlations. We can rule those out with HMQC because we already knew those one bond correlations. Occasionally C4 bond, we talked about that. Uh, conjugated systems, alkynes, um, W coupling, things where you would see long range coupling in a proton NMR. Sometimes the three bond correlations don't appear. It doesn't, uh, this is the most frustrating part is sometimes you would expect things to show up and they don't. But the absence of an HMBC correlation does not disprove your spectrum or your structure that you've come up with. A structure, uh, correlation that doesn't make sense would disprove it. So, and again, it might be too small, variety of reasons, but often looking at that car plus angle. Um, so go out and try some practice problems. There's HMBC problems in the Schaller 2D NMR section with answers. There's also a couple in, I think UCLA and a few other websites. But this is really methodical and, you'll, and what, if you're careful with your tables, you'll come up with spectra. There's structures that match the spectrum. 